We only have three and a half months until our GCSEs and that is not enough time. So should you start revising or should you wait a little longer and then revise a bit later? Well, that's exactly what I'll go over in this video. Just a quick disclaimer, I am currently editing this video right now as you can see and we hit 200 subscribers, like, what? Thank you guys for subscribing, for all the likes, comments, shares, if you have, um, thank you a lot, um, it means a lot to me, and if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do, uh, I will continuously upload every week if I can, and yeah, so thank you guys, back to the video. If you're watching this video the day I've uploaded it, then you know that we only have February, March, April, and then half of May, which is three and a half months, but how much of those should we actually spend revising? Well, what I would say is to split your revision into separate chunks which you can then distribute throughout each of the months so for example in February what I am planning on doing is getting all my flashcards done so that is the making and the revising so I currently uh, am using Remnote for my flashcards and I upload everything on there and I make my flashcards I've nearly made all of them for all of my topics but I still am missing a few from quite a lot of different fields and I need to add them as soon as possible but at the same time I'm also trying to learn all of those flashcards and the information in them because it's just really useful. I'm going to spend this February trying to get my queue down because currently it's at like 500, 490 ish so I need to really push that down all the way back to zero and then I can actually move on to my next form of revision. I also bought quite recently the CGP geography revision um, flashcards that they made themselves because I wanted to test out like um, CGP's flashcards I thought if these were good then I might buy a, for a few more of them but then I quickly realized that for me at least I don't like using other people's flashcards I like making my own because these in my opinion they're good but like I don't know it's just worded in a way that I just don't like and I personally don't really like they're, they're good they're good flashcards but in my opinion I would say that uh, it's not worth it for me but if you want you can try and get this and see if it's good I only go for geography because I just thought geography was a bit of an interesting subject my flashcards on it I have not completed much of so I just thought you know what it would be much easier if I just had flashcards already and I just did it that way but for me that doesn't work so I'm gonna have to actually just make them all myself instead I also highly recommend to keep up a daily sort of way of learning vocabulary if you have languages so for me I use memorize for my friends vocabulary and it is really useful because for languages it's really difficult to cram in vocabulary all in one month or one week so I really recommend starting back as early as you can and just learning a few like five ten words a day and you'll get a long long way by the time you get to GCSEs trust me it works really well and it doesn't use too much of your time I spend a maximum of ten minutes each day actually doing my um, memorize and it's yeah it's not really that hard I've also found a memorize for Macbeth quotations which is actually quite nice I just have it because you know the more stuff I do the better um, and yeah I haven't actually made Macbeth quotations yet like if you haven't seen my English literature video yet I actually explain the process I do to get my um, list of quotations and everything for each of my texts and things so watch that if you haven't seen that already now for me I got quite good in my mock exams so I'm not too fussed about memorizing information and stuff like that because it's already in my head quite easily but if you for example didn't do quite well in your exams then you might want to put a bit more emphasis on this time of trying to memorize the information for me flashcards works the best but for you it might be something else um, so try your hardest to actually put that effort and time in and actually learn all the information first don't be too stressed if you're not revising too much right now um, I'm not revising that much right now um, just do that occasional bit of practice every now and again but I would say that this month February should be more spent on actually just understanding everything and memorizing the content. Another thing that's really important is to go over the uh, stuff you learn in class quite regularly as well. So for example, um, I like using Seneca a lot. Um, so what I do is I, when I come back from school, I like to actually just go over the topics I did. So for example, 
Um, I did uh, blood glucose levels quite uh, recently in biology um, and then when I came home I did the Seneca on that and it just really reinforces what happened in class and it just makes everything make more sense and um, yeah I really recommend Seneca it's really good but it's not something that you should really do near the end of your revision it's more of a like a understanding and consolidating type of thing what about March and April well I am going to be doing mainly the same thing in both of those months I am going to be doing as much practice as I can, um, so as many practice questions as I can find and trying to attempt as many of them as I can because practice makes perfect. Um, of course it's not going to be, it's going to be slightly more serious than before but it's not going to be serious serious if that makes sense still. Um, April is going to be like the serious side, uh, March is going to be more still quite relaxed and everything but you can see that I'm trying to build it up from a long term rather than just cramming it all in one go because it doesn't really work for me that way. Um, so yeah I've got a few workbooks here, CGP ones, they're really useful, I really recommend getting them. So I've got this Edexcel Maths one that I have um, shown before it's really good i've also got another edexcel maths one and um, this one's like a targeted one uh, for eight to nine so it's got difficult questions in it compared to this one which is like all rounded easy questions and hard questions um they both have um well no this one's got past papers at the back which is quite cool this one doesn't but yeah they're both really nice for practice um i also have the further maths one for this as well uh further maths is great um yeah I would love to say further maths is great actually, it is quite painful compared to normal maths but yeah I at least have uh, some sort of practice to do with it as well. Um, yeah I've got the CGP Biology Chemistry Physics ones as well, these are really good as well if they had mark schemes at the back then it would have been perfect but they don't have answers which makes them really annoying so I'm trying to look for them online but it's really difficult to find them and um, yeah so I might have to like buy them separately which is going to be painful but it is what it is. I also really recommend um, Caboodle. Caboodle has lots of practice questions in their textbook if your um, school actually does Caboodle and stuff um, you can check those out they've got loads of different like listening exercises and stuff for like French and Spanish and whatever and they also have like just practice questions in general so that's also going to be useful I'm going to be trying to utilize as many of those as possible I also want to try and look at BBC Bite Size because it's got loads of quizzes and things I want to try and practice as many of those as possible too basically if I can find practice questions I'm going to do them and you know those practice questions that like in revision guides as well I'm going to try and do those as well um, yeah the more practice, uh, the better I'll get. Um, but yeah, um, I would suggest that in March and April, well March at least, just focus on getting practice done but not being too burnt out with it, like still have your relaxing time and everything and then um, in April you can try and ramp it up a little more and actually even occasionally do a past paper or two. Um, that's exactly why I created the past papers tally which I'm going to also link in the corner to. Um, you can check that out, that's where I kind of go over this sort of revision timetable type thing where you can like track all the past papers that you do and see exactly what you need to improve on and things. Um, so I'm going to be doing past papers occasionally but the majority of past papers are going to be spent for um, May and um, end of April so I can actually just focus on doing the entire past papers at once in those periods rather than um, starting from past papers and then moving on to questions I'm going to do questions first so from just all sorts of different sources such as PMT as well PMT's got um, exam questions but not actual past papers um, which is useful too or oh, it has past papers but like in terms of First, you should do um, the exam questions, which I would recommend doing in March and April. And then by the end of that, you can actually start the like the actual past papers and giving yourself the set amount of time to do those past papers, if you get what I mean. But for something like English, I'm going to be continuously practicing like a inspector calls essay and giving it to my teacher and um, not like every day but like you know once a week maybe twice a week uh, it depends on how close I am to the exams and how confident I feel with all of them um, and I'm going to be tracking that onto my past papers tally as well which I have actually started to do and stuff is looking a bit more vibrant too um, so yeah that's what I'm planning on doing so yeah that should hopefully answer the question of when you should start revising I would say start now but start slow and steady uh, and don't do too much with yourself I'd say from now start 
getting your information in your head and trying to just learn the stuff rather than actually going into practicing it and applying it so yeah I would say spend this February and a bit of March as well to actually consolidate that information make your flashcards do your flashcards and just anything else that helps you remember the information and then as you move along to March and April I'd say like move on to practice questions do as many of them as you can so the essay based subjects make sure you give your essays to the teachers to mark them don't try and do them yourself it's just it's not gonna work out and um, yeah and then when you get to end of April and May as well just do past papers after past papers after past papers just really just make sure everything's in your head and then right before the exam um, just try and for any like what I like to do is um, cramming isn't the best thing but they are times where it's actually quite useful. I'd say that it's really useful for geography where you should actually learn your case studies from beforehand but right before the exams try and look over those case studies again and again and again and then as soon as you go to your exam, this is what I did for my mocks by the way, um, as soon as I went into my exams I literally just blurted all the case studies that I knew in my head onto a piece of paper so onto the first page just so I didn't forget them and then I went with my exam and then if I found a question where I could use one of the case studies for um, I just looked back at the first page and I was like oh yeah I'll just pick this one out and yeah it actually worked really well yeah um, so hopefully that answers the question if you guys have any more questions to ask make sure you email me in the email below or you can just comment it down below okay now wait before you go I want to actually try and motivate you to actually do a bit of revision so what I want you to do right now is um, let's just pick a subject um, biology, chemistry or physics, you decide and I want, as a promise, as a favour from me, um, I want you to actually just do some sort of question anywhere you can find, go into a textbook, go into Kaboodle, um, go onto BBC Bike Size and just do one practice question, that's all I want you to do. Just find some topic that you want to do, uh, preferably a topic that you're a bit uneasy with, don't just go straight for atoms and then like a uh, charge of the electron or something actually do a question that you find quite difficult um, and then trust me uh, from there you're going to want to do a bit more um, so yeah give me that promise make sure you actually do that one practice question bye